Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 12 in Hamburg. I'm here with James Reinders from Intel. James, we had a big announcement yesterday. You guys announced the uh, Intel Xeon Phi. What's that all about? What is that machine? Well, it's an exciting addition to, to our roadmap. Uh, and it's, it's a name for an item on our roadmap we've been talking for a while. So, you know, our, uh, I, I'm in heaven because our roadmap's so much about parallelism these days. We've got the Intel E5 just really powering the top 500, and then uh, we announced this new brand, Xeon Phi, which is the name for um, our uh, upcoming product line of, uh, that uses the, the MIC architecture, the many integrated core architecture, which for us, what, what MIC architecture means is it means that we've taken and designed a processor specifically for highly data parallel workloads uh, to be very power efficient, um, but also uh, maintain the programmability and compatibility you expect with uh, Xeon. And so the Xeon Phi name is, is exciting because it, it gives us this new banner to operate under, but it also attaches the value propositions that come with uh, the Intel Xeon product line. Right, right. So, so you're a software guy, so I'm going to ask you this. Is Phi, is it an accelerator or a coprocessor? It's a coprocessor. Uh, I mean, in, in, to us that's an important um, observation. For, first of all, I, I, not to pick a net too much, but to me, accelerator sounds like a promise. Coprocessor is more of a technical description, not a marketing term. It's, um, we've taken an SMP and shrank it and put it on a chip. I mean, that, for a software developer, that's the way I look at it. It's not exactly you know, what the marketing guys want to call it, but if you want to understand technically what it is, it's an SMP put on a chip, and in this case, it has to um, uh, be a coprocessor in a system. Um, so you've got Xeon, uh, one or more Xeons, and you've got one or more um, Xeon Phi coprocessors, um, and then you program it like that. So, so it, it, it with the Xeon name, right? It you can't run Linpack just on on the coprocessor. You need the package. Is that correct? Well, actually, you can run it anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. um, the demos we did was running it in both places uh, because uh, some of my customers will say. Uh, Wow, there's too much performance in the uh, the, the the E5s or the you know the regular Xeon processors to give that up, and there's obviously too much performance on the Xeon Phi's to give that up. So just use them all together, and um, that's actually quite easy to do. I, it, as easy as any giant parallel program. Is. Sure, sure. So, okay, so the, the product's not shipping yet. You announced the brand, but what are we show? What are you guys showing here at ISC 12? And you know, what's the ecosystem showing? Well, you know, you, you go from uh, booth to booth and you'll see um, our processors used in parallel machines, whether it's the Xeon uh, E5s, uh, which are just amazing, or you'll see um, people showing off what they can do with uh, Xeon Phi. Right now, if you're looking at the Xeon Phi's out there, what you'll see is you'll see them in some booths of companies that are developing software. Um, you'll see them uh, Rogue Wave with their Total View debugger showing how they've got that working with Mike. You'll see uh, Scale MP talking about theirs, NAG with their library, uh, Alinea with TDT. Uh, my apologies, there's, there's quite a few more. Um, I've, I've got a blog people can look at or and come around the show and look. Um, and it's very gratifying what I hear. I hear customers uh, that want to develop applications realizing, wow, the, these tools are showing up. But the tool vendors are constantly telling me, you know, you said it would be a pretty straightforward port, and it was. Uh, and t the Total View folks were telling me, oh, it took about a week for us to make it work. Now, of course, you know, there's, after it's working, it's like, oh, we want to add this feature and we want to do this and that. Mm -hmm. But they said, it took a week, and we worked with uh, an accelerator that took about a year. And I said, yeah, I told you that it would port. I mean, yeah. Xeon Phi, the coprocessor, runs Linux on it, so it's, uh, uh, how do you get a Linux debugger to work on it? Well, you just compile it and run it. And <laughs> yeah, well, uh, okay, that brings out an important point. You know, you got this potential, you know, all these processors, but it's no good unless you can, uh, you know, take advantage of that with software. What's the instruction set for this thing? Is it separate? Is it x86? What is it? Well, it's x86, but it's yeah. um, uh, to, to go after highly parallel workloads, uh, one of the keys there is to use um, a small, power efficient, um, you know, lean, mean, fighting core, right? And um, to do that, in this particular design, we went back to uh, 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 
a core that's essentially a, a Pentium era design. Now that, that doesn't do justice to it because um, it, a Pentium era core would run at maybe a hundred or a couple hundred megahertz. <laughs> so there's quite a bit you do just to make it run so much faster. Um, but we also, uh, you may recall, Pentium is it was a 32-bit uh, processor. Well, so we put 64 bits in it and we added this. Um, probably the most significant um, instruction set change we made is we added these very wide vectors because again Pentiums didn't even have MMX, the original Pentiums. Um, so now we have these 512 bit wide uh, vectors which is larger than any of our regular Xeon processors have today um, but gives you that, that highly par parallel capability because parallelism comes from scaling with cores and comes from wide vector capabilities um, and actually that's the secret to programming it okay. doing both of those <laughs> yeah yeah so so what what tools are available that people could start playing with this stuff you know, it's probably hard to get their hands on beta hardware maybe but what tools are already out there you know the the um, uh, the, the, this will sound overly simplistic but it's so true the the um, uh, you, you need to make your application scale with the number of cores. So we're talking about a device with more than 50 cores per device, and you need to be able to, to vectorize and take advantage of vectors. And uh, many people will say, well, my program already does that. And I would just say, okay, when you get a Xeon Phi, you're gonna find that pretty comfortable to move over on. But um, for lots of us, we haven't necessarily done everything we can to get the code to vectorize. We haven't necessarily gotten it scaling beyond a few cores. Um, and that's what to focus on. And the nice thing is that the ecosystem's very rich with a lot of tools. Of course, from Intel, we're very proud of our Parallel Studio and Cluster Studio, but you just walk around the show and there's just so many companies, including many companies I mentioned before, that have great tools to help you with those two issues, getting your program to scale and getting your program to vectorize. And of course, debugging and understanding whether you did everything right go ahead, do that on a Xeon processor, and if it's running great with uh, 30, 40, 50 cores and it's vectorizing on AVX, um, Xeon Phi will be uh, a walk in the park. If it's not, um, it won't help you having a Xeon Phi and working with it, um, because the problems you face as a programmer are the same as on a Xeon. Okay, so James, I guess kind of a wrap up here, you know, uh, the top 500 came out yesterday, and yes. one of the biggest surprises for me was that there was a, a Xeon Phi machine on there. What's that about? Yes, so, so you know, as part of our processes inside Intel, we, we want to be working on a larger machine before we start shipping these. So we built up a machine, and uh, we had a little debate, and then we said, well, okay, let's list it. Um, some people wonder uh, how serious is Intel about this. Um, it's pre-production hardware. <laughs> if, if it were ready to ship and sell, we would be shipping and selling it. We're, it's pre-production, that's sure. great. And the software is too. In fact, the version of MKL we use, the version of our compilers, the version of our MPI, um, our team won't even call it beta quality quite yet. So it's alpha. So this is, uh, you get a glimpse of what we're capable of, but um, by no means is this uh, the, the best it's gonna be. It it's only gets better from here. So mm -hmm. I was really excited. Came in at number 150 on the list. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, our internal system that we're using to, uh, to try things out and, and, you know, debug hardware and software. Well, that's terrific. So, you know, I know we can't talk about availability, but sometime this year, can we expect the, the five products to be shipping? And uh, you, What you can expect this year is uh, uh, we'll be in production, which means we're confident we'll be able to be making it. Now, of course, we also have uh, the TAC machine that's been publicized, and uh, that machine will be operational at the beginning of next year. It may it may or may not use pre-production parts, so I, you know, not promising that those will be production parts, but we will uh, we will deliver that. And obviously, we're we already demonstrated we can get a machine on the uh, top 500, so I'm I'm feeling very comfortable we can deliver uh, to our customers' expectations. Well, great. So, so I guess we shouldn't forget. In the meantime. Um, in that same top 500 list, Intel had a heavy presence with, with the Xeon processor. Uh, yeah, it's extremely exciting. And the E5 has made a great debut or a great um, jump on, on the list and just uh, uh, keeps emphasizing just you know uh, what our customers can get done with uh, the processors that we're very proud to produce.